I remember being told things like, you're ugly, your hair is ugly, you're too fat. As a child, you take those hurtful things and you harbor them, and that's what I did. I just started developing this really bad self-image at a young age. I didn't really know who I was, and I didn't know how to communicate that, especially to the people around me, because I was like, I mean, you're, you're one of the people who hurt me. I became a really good liar. Around maybe five, six, I had been molested. When you're little, you don't, you don't understand what's going on, but it's having an effect on you. Everybody becomes an enemy. So I would put up walls and only let you see a side of me that I felt was acceptable, and you never got to really see the real me. I would try to fit in and it didn't work. So I got on the internet. The internet was kind of like my safe place because I could be who I wanted to be on the internet. And that kind of opened the door to pornography. Teenage years, I thought dating was one of the things that you did in order to be somebody. I started having sex, sneaking around. I would delve into different things and try to run with different circles to try to find me. That's actually when I started dealing with homosexuality. It's crazy because you, you try to do things to make yourself better, but you just end up making yourself worse. I couldn't sex it out. I couldn't drink it out. I couldn't hang out with enough people. I, I couldn't wear the right clothes. I was a wreck. Right before I was 16, I was raped by someone I knew. Not only am I depressed, am I suicidal, am I dealing with homosexuality, now I'm dealing with this. What in the world? It made me even more isolated. It really made me hate myself. Why would you do this? Why would you make this kind of decision? How crazy can you be? I didn't feel like I could tell anybody, like who, who's gonna listen to me? You just feel so dirty, but you become a master at hiding it. I was 17 and I was invited to church uh, with a friend of mine. There's just all this singing and dancing, and I was just like, woo, I've never experienced this before. And I was like, man, like, I, I want that kind of light. I want that kind of peace. I came in contact with a young lady who's still a friend of mine now. And I remember one time we hung out, and we were sitting at the table, and she said, Kim, what, what's really going on with you? I was like, you know, well, what, are you, what are you talking about? You know, putting up that wall. And she said, you know, I don't know why the Lord is telling me to say this, but I'm going to say it. She said, Kimmy, I've been raped. And I was like, okay. And she said, the Lord told me to tell you that. And she said, were you raped? And I was like, yes. It felt like chains coming off. And I was telling her what happened. I was explaining the story and she was like, you were right and you're gonna be okay. And that really, that really did something for me. It took time. I started hanging around Christian friends and I started going to church and I started hearing the word. Second Corinthians 5 and 17, where it says that we're all new creatures in Christ. The old is gone and the new has come. When I read that verse, I was like, whoa. It was crazy to think that someone like me, who's made a lot of crazy, irresponsible decisions, could be transformed into something new, could be loved by the creator of the universe. And I was like, I can't keep living this kind of life. God, I want you to come into my life. I need you to be my savior. Like, I really need to do this for real. I began to pray for the people who hurt me people who told me, you this, you that, you're not this, you're not that. And even for the, for the man who raped me, I began to pray, and like, God, bless him. That was a huge step. Right now, I oversee a campus ministry called Youth Taking Charge, it's YTC. It allows me to share my story with other people that are in my generation, to be able to look at them and say, hey, I, I see where you are, 
and I was there too. Come on. I go from not wanting to tell anybody the stuff I'm dealing with, and now I'm sharing it with everybody. It's straight discipleship. <laughs> And I love it. But when you become free in Christ, now the chains are broken, now you have a choice. It's not easy, but at the same time, you have to take that risk because there's freedom when you start telling your story, when you start confessing. <laughs> I love me. I believe that Jesus loves me. I really do. And sometimes we don't we don't think like that. Like Jesus loves everybody, you know, he's just Jesus and he's supposed to. He does love you. He's very intentional about getting to know you. And that's where my confidence lies. Are we recording?